Hey guys, today we talk about how to become a tech lead. And the guest that I have today grew into that position himself and is now engineering manager over at IKEA. I love this perspective on the topic, on how to get there and how to grow into that position. My guest today, Mahdi Fani Disfani. Beyond Coding. Welcome to Beyond Coding, a dive into the world of successful people in IT. From your sponsors, Zebia, creating digital leaders. Here's your host, Patrick Akil. Hey, man. Hey. How's it going? All great. Right. Thank yeah? you. Yeah. So far, so good. Everything. Awesome. What about you? Good, man. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah. So today I wanted to talk about how to become a tech lead, right? And, uh, yeah. and how to become a good one. The skills that are involved there uh, and how you actually can get to that point. Yeah. Because to me, starting out and, and kind of still, I have no clue how to get there or when to do that. Uh, or even what skills I I need, right? Yeah. I need I I know I need to be really good at what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, but when is kind of that step that you make, uh, and say, okay, well, I want to take that role upon me. And what is extra, right? Is it still the same as a as a software engineer? Yeah. Uh, and probably I guess something changes. H how was that for you? Like, was that something that came upon your path, or something you actually actively pursued? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question because usually, I mean, if you consider the, the software development and of of course my personal experience, yeah, it's usually coming and you do an internship or anyhow you start like a junior or intern, yeah, and um, it's always wondering okay uh, how to get to the to the next levels and uh, maybe in changing the position from a software engineer to a tech lead or a team lead, mm -hmm. this is always a question and it was a question for me. Uh, but um, for me, of course, the turnover was the moment that I picked it up myself. But before going uh, close to the tech lead and team lead, we have to also see about the, the growth that you can get uh, before getting to that level. And it's basically starting as a software engineer. You are still so new in the staff. You try to learn from people. You need some supervision from people to help you. And the next level will be usually to become a mid-year and then become a senior and, yeah. and so on. Um, but one th one thing I, I learned myself and based on my experience was that um, usually people are kind of mentally getting in the trap of perfection. Like okay. uh, you are a junior and you don't know where when really you kind of flip over to, to the next level, become a mid-year or senior. And, and uh, the main question that you should ask yourself, how much I'm dependent to people to make my job done? So okay. that was the question I always asked myself. Mm -hmm. And when I was getting more confident about answering that question, I was understanding, okay, it seems that I'm moving forward and yeah. I'm getting to the next position. So it's actually, I love to say dependent, right? Because yeah. I, I like teamwork, but that doesn't mean I can't do the work myself. Absolutely. I'm just faster within that team and, and with my peers next to me. Exactly. Uh, but I could still do the work myself. Yeah. So for you, your growth was actually uh, based on that, right? No dependencies for me doing the things that I need to do. Yeah, if we check the also kind of uh, some flow charts or, uh, or things in the literature, you can see the moment actually you, how you divide engineers in different levels, mm. it's coming from the, the, the terms called delegation, right? Yeah. How much you can delegate something to an engineer. Then you can understand from the confidence you have that the person is able to fulfill the, the task you can understand how, how good is the person from the seniority perspective. Yeah. So if um, you know when, when you work with, with juniors, you always know that you have to mentor them more often mm. than, than the higher senior, actually senior engineers. But when you have the senior engineer, it's not your job to, to check it out anymore. You just put the task there and you clarify the requirements together and then the person would be able to, to basically accomplish the job. It doesn't matter if he has the full knowledge. It yeah. Being being senior doesn't mean you know everything. No, yeah. you don't know, you don't know anything when you know you are a senior because as you grow further, you know how much you don't know. Basically, that's, exactly that's my personal experience. But it means that you you are able to find the right people. You are able to search things and uh, basically whatever you need to finish something. Yeah, and uh, that's what I call full delegation as a senior engineer. I like that, but it's it sounds scary. Right, because at some point you're like, well, I'm I'm comfortable, but am I comfortable enough? Yeah, right to make that step, and it's also very nuanced. Right, you can make that without actually a title change. You can just get more responsibility and grow in that way. Yeah, but your title might not change, or the other way around, your title might change, but your your way of working doesn't, your responsibility yeah. doesn't either. Uh, so how's that? 
in kind yeah, of yeah and i think it, yeah it's, it's two sides of the story mm. it's not just you as an engineer it's also the environment yeah. so um i think when when companies or the managers are there this is their responsibility to ensure that the person gets a proper title yeah. as they grow and also when they grow they really get something new in the, in their plate yeah to grow further because um if i'm a junior engineer i'm a I'm became even get the the title of a mid-year engineer and I'm still doing the same thing and yeah. I don't have still the autonomy to do a stuff and be more trusted on on the delegation side then I think nothing changed yeah, exactly. uh, because I cannot grow further and yeah. the expectation is coming from the moment that I'm growing I'm also given more responsibilities yeah. otherwise the engineer will become bored demotivated and uh, and yeah that's ending up to unproductivity and also unfortunately leaving a company to switch to to the new environment maybe that's also one of the kind of problems the companies try to mm. to solve yeah and uh and yeah that's basically two side of the story yeah but it's also very hard right i know for me personally i when i started out i made it sure that i took more responsibility but it yeah. wasn't necessarily given to me i pulled it or i pulled my manager aside and said I I want this basically yeah. and he was like well there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh but to have that automatically right to have that organization uh at such a maturity level that they're like okay this person is ready let's give them a bit more. Yeah. I Absolutely. think that's very hard to accomplish. Uh yeah and but you know uh, in my opinion it's mm-hmm. it's coming from how good or mature is the company in the in the personal growth yeah. plans. So if if the company has a kind of systematic growth plan and evaluation and performance metrics then they can ensure that uh the the engineer or the, of course the, the the developer is doing the job right yeah. based on the current expectation and what are the next steps in the coming years that the person should take yeah. and uh, should go through because um there are different type of personalities let's let's be honest about it some mm-hmm. people prefer to be calm in the in the kind of comfort zone yeah and they can stay in a company for years and uh slowly grow to the next level and get titles but some people and i've seen a lot of them and you are one of the examples as you <laughs> mentioned so they are passionate about growing you know they are passionate to do more they they want to just have higher impact yeah so you shouldn't stalk them you shouldn't block them but also you shouldn't waste them by giving them uh, a bit fast the things that they want to have maybe th- you have to also ensure that they are ready to take the next step yeah but not with demotivating them no but by creating the path for them for example in my personal experience i felt sometimes uh in some uh actually some of my uh places that they work uh mm-hmm. that Yeah I've seen that blocker sometimes is hitting so hard to the software that feels okay I'm not fully uh, or fully trusted or I'm not enough trusted. Yeah. Uh, but we shouldn't give that feeling but we have to make it more clarified that uh, you know it's not about you I would love to help you just let's ensure that you take the right step because I don't want to waste you and waste your your talent. Yeah. I think if it comes to a collaboration then everyone would be happy at the end of the day and you know the companies are spending so much money and uh to to hire good talent yeah uh, but i think there should be also more money to uh <laughs> kind of improve those talents and uh in my opinion kind of release them to yeah. their highest potential so uh that's yeah. a good point like really you critical. don't you don't want to throw someone in the ocean and just expect them to swim if they just if they're still uh a novice for example right you can yeah. just throw a kid in the ocean expect them to to make it out of there absolutely uh, but there should always be a path you don't want to block someone and be like no this is a no go for you yeah uh, but you want to give them the option to to have that growth path uh and to get there at some point exactly uh, and i think that that should come also a bit proactively from the engineer as well mm. if they don't if the environment is great yeah um then that's that's of course the ideal situation yeah. so the, the environment is taking care of you and pushing you forward even if you want to be still in your comfort zone but your manager said No. This year you are going to achieve this. I'm going to put you through some uh courses and uh, I'm going to give you more responsibility than next year you are in this level. So that's the perfect manager that everyone is looking for, I would say. Yeah. And I try to be one by the way. But <laughs> nice. Um uh, uh, the the main thing about also that I found it myself very useful because I was also a proactive person, like passionate to do a stuff. Yeah. And uh, and sometimes I call myself a shortcut. <laughs> shortcut actually finder. Yeah. Because um for me uh this is important that i ensure also what i want and mm-hmm. um and i always try to have couple of years plan in my career and for personal actually uh matter yeah and and i i i couldn't find maybe most of the time or 
sometimes these in, in other engineers because they still think a bit short term, not long term. Yeah. And I try to, and during uh, actually the period that I'm a team lead or tech lead, mm. I try to help them to have a broader view that you have to also understand where you want to stand in two or three years because then you can have proper demand from the company yeah. and from me as, as, your, as your lead because if you don't know where you want to go, maybe I cannot help you that much because yeah. I try to push you, but maybe that's not something you like. You want to, you're a software engineer, but you want to become a product owner. So maybe the path that I'm pushing you is the wrong one. Yeah. But if you know from the beginning that they want to become a team lead or tech lead, so uh, oh, perfect. So uh, let's make a plan. Yeah. Where we are now, you're here. Okay, let's have short short goals. Let's have long-term goals. And yeah, I'm ensuring that you reach there. Yeah, I love that because it's, it's still managing expectations, right? It's exactly this time er internally, right, to your manager. I want to become this or I am going to try this. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't know what you want to become until you try it, right? Yeah. You could be like, well, I want to try it being a scrum master. And that's something you can do on top of your job some of the times uh, next to being an engineer uh, or even the product owner role. You could you could kind of be adjacent to it and, and grant some uh, responsibilities yeah. for that. Um, True. Try things out and then move to that next spot, basically. I exactly. like that you say it needs to be out there. It needs to be conversation, right? Because if you don't know as a manager, yeah, then you might push them in the wrong way. Exactly. And also in companies, there are these kind of HR systematic kinds of, kind of growth plans and evaluation, performance evaluations, mm -hmm. that based on that, you, you check a performance of a, of a software engineer and yeah. also know if to if need to promote them or how basically they don't do on their work. Um, but also it's important that the companies initiate that talk. Mm -hmm. And if the person is still lost, that doesn't know where going to go and yeah. just try to help him to figure out that and and we have to invest on people in my opinion yeah. from the company's perspective um, because I really have really high respect and high value for people and then products because for me all those people are first and then second nice. product yeah um, so I think if you have the right people uh, with the right mindset then um, you can make anything possible uh, yeah. and even if they don't have the skills that you need you can grow them there because if they are passionate enough, if they are uh, basically well-minded engineers, mm -hmm. okay, this is the well, the best ground to, uh, yeah, basically grow what you want. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. I didn't know that starting out uh, in the adult job world, basically, uh, but you can learn a lot of things, right? If the environment is right and if your mindset is right, um, it might be scary, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you learn along the way, and that's how you grow, right? Yeah, and, and th this is exactly the key in my basically career growth mm. uh, is I never actually wait for the moment to be perfect okay. uh, for the next level. Yeah, When I was confident about 70, 80% I'm ready, I took the, the next step yeah. and uh, and I tried to dare to get the scary part yeah. uh, because what I, s what I believe is that's a push for me. Mm. If I want to stay for perfection, maybe it's never happening Yeah, because you are a junior then you start in the medium.com and say okay as a junior what i should know and you can have thousand of articles yeah then you feel okay i have to read all of them to know what you should know as a junior engineer but in my opinion that's not it actually if you are confident enough to become more independent mm -hmm. and you want to try if you can be more the independent then take the next step yeah if you of course if you have a safe environment that you can fail and learn from it so yeah do that and uh, and let's fail and if you didn't actually make it then you will learn what you miss and then you will try again yeah so that's what i tried uh, in my career and it helped me always have a motivation always have a push yeah to not be kind of um, enough for myself i said okay i still can have bigger impact of course yeah. i try to not rush it and try to learn enough as i said 70 percent, 80 percent. if you're already just go for it yeah um but Progress is always more important than perfection. Yeah, that's uh, I love that phrase. Yeah, and you turned that because I said it's kind of a fear, but you turned that into motivation and drive. Right, it should drive you to be better and to learn more uh, about the next step that you're taking. No one's gonna tell you, okay, you're now perfect <laughs> and ready to move on. Yeah. Right, that's the hard part about this growth path. Yeah, is it's not that black and white. No, and and I think it's a blurry boundaries between a junior, mid year, and senior. And sometimes yeah. I personally I kind of draw that line and say, uh, but 
what I try to be uh, actually cautious about is how my engineers are growing. Mm. And if uh, there are different speed of growing, honestly, in people, because maybe some do some more homeworks in their spare time and they are more passionate to learn stuff and they are going a bit quicker maybe the, uh, compared to others. Yeah. But you have to always ensure that they are all pushed forward. Yeah. Um, and you have to also teach them how to uh, be passionate about their future. Because sometimes I talk to engineers that they were saying, okay, but we are, uh, you're getting a good salary, mm. you're having good vacation, and, yeah. uh, and we have a good actually environment we're working. But I said, okay, this is really what you want uh, all from your career? And said, yeah. yeah, but maybe in a couple of years. And I said, yeah, think about that couple of years. I, you have to demand, and this is um, two sentences that I believe in my career. Okay. First, if, if uh, an engineer doesn't grow well, maybe the, it, he or she doesn't ask more or mm. the demand is low from the engineer perspective. And if the team is not delivering sometimes or you think that the engineer is not productive enough or uh, the delivery is in the low rate, mm. I think the main, uh, the first you have to check the, the, the managers and the business if they give them proper requirements and proper job tasks, you know? Yeah. Because sometimes we mix these two when, when the engineer is not productive, you feel, okay, that's the engineer that's not growing or maybe we hire a senior but he's not a senior or something like that. But yeah. I think before that you have to check if you really properly give them tasks to do it. And I think that's a mistake sometimes. I think these two parts, I mean, from the engineer perspective, we need higher demands and from the managers we need, or from the companies, we need higher demand and proper requirements. Then I think then you will end up to a win-win yeah. game at the end. I like that. It's the environment that we need to look at, basically, right? Exactly. There might be a weird environment and throwing more people at it, more developers at it, it's not going to fix the problem then. No, no. It's going to create a new problem. Exactly. And and in my opinion, when the engineer doesn't grow or um, they, don't, they are not productive as yeah. they should be, you have to figure out what's going on before doing a switch. Because uh, or sometimes people are a bit we are too much in the money side. Then mm. you say, okay, this is a budget. This is restricted. But I think people have lots of potentials. Yeah. And if you don't use them, you just waste them. So ensure that you didn't waste them, then go for the other evaluations. Yeah. And yeah, that's what I believe. Who's, uh, whose responsibility is that to, to basically challenge the environment instead of the engineers then? Um, yeah, of course, engineer is playing, yeah. I think, uh, one of the main roles, but also uh, the managers and the company uh, and uh, and of course, if you have managers or team lead tech lead, I mean all yeah, any of them, yeah. uh, your higher level basically, yeah. Um, because companies should demand more uh, and and ensure that they grow because I think it's a uh, it's also costly for the companies if you don't have a growth uh, for your engineers because yeah. at the end of the day, somewhere you need a senior engineer and okay, now you have to hire or. You're already gonna think about it and grow it internally because if yep. you grow it internally, it's much less costly than you hire people. And and I think now companies reach that point, and you know there are lack of talents now in the market. Yeah, and it's difficult to find that, uh, especially in Amst in in the Netherlands. And and the, the reason is um, we didn't really invest in people, mm. and we tried to solve our problems overnight. Yeah. Um, and I think if we check football clubs, I have a background of football, but if you check uh -huh. those football clubs, they go to like countries and start finding kids and then growing them growing them and for a couple of years they invest on them and then and then they become great players yeah and and one of the examples is Messi he was like 9 10 or something they invested on him and gave him uh yeah what he needed for the care and now he became a star yeah um of course I'm a fan of Henry by the way <laughs> uh, but um this is actually the way that you should see an engineer when you yeah. have great people from after graduation or interns work on them and also uh, make a plan for them internally. Yeah, I want to make this engineer senior in a couple of years. And uh, even if they don't know anything about that yet, but you already have a plan for them because you are the most actually knowledgeable person in that environment. Yeah, And, uh, and I think when you have that, then you give this mindset to the engineer from the first steps and they become high demanded engineers and passionate to grow in their career and of course this is a win for you because the, the company gonna take benefit from that. Yeah, for sure. And I love that you say, right, they don't come in with that mindset sometimes, but yeah. it's your job as an engineering manager uh, or any other manager, for example, yeah. to instill that mindset and to be like, you can keep growing if you want it. 
right? Yeah. Don't be complacent in where you are. Don't try to be perfect. A yeah. little bit of fear can motivate you into doing the right things. Exactly. I like that. And 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 um, I think this is uh, this this way of working uh, still need to be more broader in uh, in in different companies because yeah. not all the all the companies really thinking like that and this kind of delivery delivery uh, yeah kind of mindset of yeah finish 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 uh, I think this is uh, a kind of a bad uh, habit that. You see, uh, maybe in most of the companies, they try yeah. to do that. But I see also a good trend now, they change their mind. Mm-hmm. Um, we have to understand engineers are, are humans. Exactly. <laughs> We're all humans. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, everyone, you should understand they have potential. And um, uh, if we back to the main question that we are going to actually answer today is how to become a tech lead, mm. then you, you actually uh, are responsible for making that organization to give the offer to that person mm. that the person can see himself in in that position at the first place and then the person can imagine or demand I want to be a template actually because if I'm going to be a template and there is no such a position in the company yeah how I'm going to have that image you know and exactly uh, but if you make that image it's exactly what I call it loyalty uh, basically program for the companies yeah do you, do you have a loyalty for your employees and this loyalty program is something every day you come with something new that the person doesn't still have it but want to have it. It's like yeah. um, creating these organizational hierarchies that can the person can see himself for a couple of years in that hierarchy or uh, yeah in yeah. those positions available. I yeah, love the analogy with the loyalty program, <laughs> yeah. right? Because you always, well, you save points and you always see what's out there that you can spend your points on. And let's exactly. say your points are actually experience that you accumulate uh, as you grow from junior to media to senior, yeah. you always need to see, well, there's the option for me to do this, right? I always yeah. have options. Uh, and when you don't have options, you're going to look outside to see what the other options are. Yeah. And as you said, it's way harder to acquire a new customer than it is to keep what you have. Exactly. So why don't we do that for the the guys that we have already? Exactly. Yeah. And of course, now we are focusing on, empl- on, on engineers, but I think this is applied for all the type of employees that yeah. you have to have that for them. And... Um, if we be back to that question again, this is something that it's what I'm saying today. It's all, of course, my personal humble opinion. Yeah. Uh, but what I understood uh, for the tech lead that people uh, usually doesn't know how the tech lead works, how to become a tech lead. Um, yeah. uh, this is this is something that you should know as a software engineer that when you grow in your career and you become a great engineer, you are a great developer, you are a senior person. Yeah. Then um, there are different basically direction you can get in your career. You can become Still more deep in the in the engineering side, become a principal engineer or um, solution architect, or uh, yeah, you name it. Mm-hmm. But also, you can come to the moment that you want to be a bit closer to to business to have kind of a team uh, actually impact. Yeah, and then this is the moment that you can think of a tech lead or team lead position. Um, and I think if you think of a team lead or tech lead position, you are still a senior engineer. Hands are coder. So yeah. if you need to code. You have to code. Yeah. And uh, personally, I I do code a lot. Uh, and uh, and it sometimes happens that your engineers are unsick or uh, yeah, and then there is a kind of a pressure to finish something in a short period. Then you are with them. Yeah. Uh, but the main thing that as a tech lead you have to keep in mind if you want to become is you have to dare to to face the business, mm. to shield the team, and also be accountable for the for the deliveries and uh, for the quality of your basically software. Yeah. And uh, this is the moment if you would like those tastes, then you can think beca- of uh, becoming tech lead. Yeah. So it's once your, uh, your maturity with your skills, let's say software development, uh, are at that maturity point that you, you can actually go deeper and deeper into different, yeah. well, we have different branches that you can uh, branch off to. Or you can go more high over, right? More of that soft skill side, more of the business side but still hands-on programming, right? That doesn't disappear when you're a tech lead? No, not per se. I mm. think maybe it's become even more, but uh, this is also a critical thing as, as a tech lead, yeah. uh, which becomes a skill that you require to get that position is yeah. uh, time management. Mm. Because you will have new things in your plate. At the same time, you have to be kind of an urgent call available person for the engineers. That yeah. if you, they need uh, questions, if they need help to for the direction of the tech or what to do next, then you are the person there because yeah. you have to also be besides the uh, the PO for the priorities list. Mm-hmm. 
but also you are a technical person, right? Yeah. And you you can see okay, there is a feature that the PO said it should be done in one sprint or next next week it should be there. Yeah. And then you see a production bug. Mm. So these are the moment that you shield uh, basically to quality and and that's the re- responsibility to have the discussion with the PO and with the business. Yeah. But at the same time, um, you you fix things that are the most important from the technical perspective, not per se only business. Yeah. And um, and this is actually becomes to to the area that you should have a great relation with the POs. Mm. And uh, I think if you don't have that, then it's not going to work out. Yeah. In my opinion. It's the the trust balance that it needs to be there. Exactly. Uh, otherwise, they're never going to trust that you can actually fix the production bug first and then still deliver. Exactly. The, yeah. the main point here is when you become a tech lead, you are basically a leader mm. or a team lead. I, I consider them both. But yeah. what I mean with those terms is the person which is accountable for the deliveries and it's a hands on coder. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure out there, there are different definitions about team lead and tech lead. Yeah. Um, but when you are there, you have to consider that, um, yeah, you, you will be actually uh, the, 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 the extra eyes on the technical side to ensure that things are picked up at the right time mm-hmm. and also they are delivered with the with the best so uh you also learn as a tech lead you're not you're not the god there yeah and i i have lots of examples that i didn't know the concept but they asked my senior engineer or my engineer to go and and basically do a studying and please come and and teach me yeah and uh, do you have to understand when you you want to become a tech lead it doesn't mean you are the god so don't wait for the moment that uh, there are no no questions that you cannot answer but then yeah. go for it i was a a tech lead of a, of a web application, and then I switched to to mobile, and I learned a lot about mobile. I was not that much into the native codes, but when I became a tech lead, I I get confident to to touch them, and also I learn from my engineers. Yeah. The main thing as a tech lead is, you are enough confident to step up your your game, mm-hmm. and uh, and you wanna actually take more responsibilities. Yeah. And also you wanna be basically the person give the the space to your engineers to grow yeah at the same time having the highest productivity and delivery and you are the person of their motivation actually uh driver because uh the the, the engineers are not the, the they are not talking the same language as business right yeah and you are the person should do the basically the the grammar uh between these two and uh and if you do a good job then you can always keep them motivated and always be with them transparent of course yeah uh, but ensure that they are happy so I like that you're kind of the bridge between the the business and the technical side exactly but, uh, to zoom in on on your personal history then let's say you move to that senior engineer position and you're comfortable with what you're doing but you do want to take that next step right it's either going to be more to the technical side and, and more deep uh, or more high over as you described it being that bridge uh, between yeah. the business and the technical side why was it the bridge between the business and the tech and not necessarily deeper into the tech. Yeah, I think it happened, of course, in Zuver. I, I pick up as a team lead there. But it's actually for me, it was a, it was a nice story that um, the company didn't have that position as a team lead. And uh, I felt that I want to be leading the project was going in the, in the company. And um, we had some also leaves in, in that moment in the company. Mm. And I've seen there is a kind of a gray space ready to to actually demand it. This is exactly coming to my first point. You have to demand it. Yeah. And you have to have this also passion about your future that you want to grow. Mm-hmm. So when you have that, then you see opportunities. And I've seen an opportunity. So then I talked to, to my manager. I said, I see that position, even if we don't have it, but I want to have that. And, yeah. and of course, we had a couple of discussions and of course i'm thankful the company created that they reorganized uh, the, uh, the hierarchy of the company and created new positions which yeah. one of them was was team lead and i took that and happily it went very very good and uh, yeah. and of course it was so new for me l- new challenges new things but because i demanded then i bought all those hardships because i want to have that you know yeah. and and at the end, when, when it came to uh, an outcome and the product was live to production and, and it was working, so we were celebrating. And this bounding between team that we created together and having that kind of uh, being a, a teamwork and family, basically, mm. then it just uh, was a kind of highlight on me. I said, okay, I want to do that more, you know? Yeah, that and makes uh, sense. I continued, yeah. I love that you saw the opportunity. You thought this, I, I might be a great fit for that or I yeah. want to try that. Uh, and you did it and it worked out well. I exactly. love that. And uh, also, the, the first thing that I did, honestly, I didn't look out mm. 
for that position. I just try to see if I can make that. This is this is of course coming from different personalities. Maybe yeah. you are a bit shy and you say, okay, no, uh, maybe it's not my type, you know. Mm-hmm. But I, uh, my recommendation to those actually people is just find a way to expose your your needs. Yeah. If you don't want to talk to your manager orally, just to talk to your colleague. Say okay, that's my ambition. Maybe some just put it out there because one of the problems I have sometimes with engineers, they are not talking. Yeah. <laughs> I say okay, if I knew that, I, I could make it happen. You know, yeah. and and that's why I think one of the things that you should learn is be always vocal about your needs, mm. and uh, and I'm sure you get a better result than keeping them for yourself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it, the environment should allow you to to reach those needs. Right, if they're the right needs. Exactly. But and if you're not voicing them, <laughs> it's kind of hard to do yeah. that. <laughs> and of course, on the other hand, I don't say this is only, as I said, this is two job, actually, yeah. task, because the environment should be also preparing that uh, that system. And what I have seen, in at least in, in the Netherlands company that I work so far, mm-hmm. I've seen there are always a feedback, actually, system that uh, or a channel uh, that you set goals for yourself. You, you give the things that you think, or um, and at least you have sometimes to talk to your manager. So... That's a helpful, basically, setup Mm -hmm. and a healthy one. And for other companies, if they hear that, I I would say, please make that space for your your engineers. Let them talk. Uh, Don't be afraid Then they are going to demand a lot. No, but when they demand, at least you can uh, have a better understanding of the of the environment that you need to create for them. And and sometimes maybe it helps company to expand because talents absorb talents. Exactly. If you make one talent, person happy then um, it's going to bring other talents to your company yeah. and I think this is the best trade in the in the world in my opinion yeah for sure <laughs> like opening up that dialogue and allowing people to grow other people will see that and they will want to be a part of that right if you if you create something great uh, then other people are going to be like well I also want to do that or I want to help achieve that yeah Absolutely. And yeah. you are sometimes in a discussion with your friends or with some engineers from different companies and you hear they are telling the story how it works in their company and you say, okay, I wish I had that too. Mm. So, um, and I think we have to understand from the company's perspective that's really important um, for the engineer to be loyal to a company. Yeah. If that space is not there or if you don't uh, ask them, uh, then uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to end up well. Yeah, it's going to be hard. Yeah, moving back to to what you said earlier, right? You moved towards that team lead or tech lead position, and you already laid out some of the qualities that are different from being an engineer, right? Time management yeah. wasn't one necessarily that I had in mind. I did see that you need to be a bit more vocal uh, and be able to manage the business side as a stakeholder, uh, as well as still have your your technical expertise. What are some of the other aspects, right? Because a lot of people move to that position, uh, but it's not for everyone. And you need to have that no, soft skill side. Indeed. Uh, of course, uh, uh, that's why I don't recommend to everyone to become a tech lead after senior engineer. No, uh, pick up your game based on your your actually your wishes. Yeah. Um, but as a, as a tech lead or team lead, you have to be uh, a bit kind of eagle eye mm. and have a full picture in mind uh, from the business perspective and from the technical perspective. Yeah. That's that's a skill that you should have. You have to be patient. Mm. And uh, you have to have a stress control, especially on the t- close to deadline times, and yeah. uh, because you are the, the the first person accountable for the for the deliveries, and um, PO will come to you, business will come to you, everyone will come. Okay, what's happening? Are we live in two weeks? And you have to be able to to trust your engineers and also keep the environment calm until the last moment that something gonna go live, and of course after that. Yeah. Um, so the critical moments, you have to be patient and you have to be kind of a stress. You know the stress management well. Yeah, uh, and also one thing that you should uh, basically keep in mind as a tech lead is um, if you don't know anything and if you need something, be vocal about it as well. Yeah, don't keep it as a, I'm a lead. I <laughs> shouldn't demand. Yeah, you know? no, that's not that's not how it works. You should say about the weaknesses or the, about the things that you don't know about them. Mm-hmm. Because I was in a position in my projects that okay, I don't know that much about security. I'm not sure if we are deli- what we deliver is gonna be secure. So I try to just ask people and, and uh, connect to, to security actually teams. Mm-hmm. Say, okay, could you come and challenge my solution if from the security if you're okay? And and I think this is uh, basically you're a kind of a linker between uh, solution architect, security. I mean, anything can be involved in your project. Yeah, but you shouldn't keep them all for yourself. I'm a tech <laughs> lead, so I know everything now. That that's not actually how it works. Yeah. Um, 
and um, I think they are so important to keep in mind. I like that you're kind of the the glue in between the different aspects. And if you don't know something, uh, we need to be able to explain it, right? And if someone can't explain it, then that's something we need to zoom into. Exactly. It doesn't necessarily mean we're doing a bad thing. Yeah. It means we have an option and we need to explore it. Yeah. And having said that, it's exactly summing up to to the main skill that you should have as a leader, I mean, in general, but also as a tech lead, is a decision making. Yeah. So you should be able to make decisions. Mm. Don't, I mean, postponing is a, is a, is a good cheating yeah. when you want to make a decision. But at the end of the day, you are the person making decisions. Um, your engineers come to you and say, okay, I have two solutions for this problem. This is this tool, this is this tool, what do you think? Mm. And then, of course, you should check the result at the end it's waiting for you to make a decision. Of course, you can delegate and say, okay, make a decision, I trust you, that's also one way. Yeah. But sometimes they need a, a more confident person to say yes, because later if something goes wrong, you should be the person responding to, yeah. to the questions. So keep in mind that it comes to the moments and uh, that you have to make uh, firm decisions. And it doesn't mean you cannot make mistakes, or make decisions and then you make mistakes, okay, you learn from it. Yeah. Don't be afraid about it. Also in big companies I've worked, uh, you have the moments that you consider, okay, I'm gonna make a decision for a big company. You know how bad can be the impact or something like that, that you are a bit getting scared <laughs> internally. Yeah. But uh, then you have to trust your guts, your your information, your knowledge, and whatever you know, and make a decision because they put you there to make decisions. Otherwise, yeah. the manager of you, of, the, of you will come and say, okay, if you cannot do that, why I put you there? So, this is a responsibility, and I'm, and I also I found it myself that uh, my managers were so supportive if I make a mistake. And the the good things that I think you can keep in mind to ensure that you do make actually you make better decisions is get in contact with the same level of people in your company. Say okay, how you would do that. Yeah. And and I think this is always great for me. It's always the key solution to just put it out there between um, engineering community. And ask and feedbacks, and uh, it's always giving you a better uh, ratio of confidence. Yeah, I mean that's it's so different from when I was, let's say, a teenager and I looked at the adult world. Um, I always thought leaders would make the decision and make sure it, it went through. But you're saying like there's always options, and and sure you make that end decision sometimes, but sometimes you delegate. But you do have the responsibility and accountability, right? That's the difference. Uh, and if the organization doesn't give it to you then the title means nothing. Yeah. Right? You have the title, but you can't really do anything with it. Exactly. Right? That, so that's exactly. also needs to be ready. Exactly. So that's the basically the boundary between micromanaging and, and delegation. Yeah. So if you want to delegate to me, okay, you are the lead of this project. You are the accountable for the deliveries. And then every day you come, okay, are you sure about this decision? And then <laughs> leave me alone. I don't want to yeah. have that position, you know? Um, and hopefully I had that um, experience. Uh, and, uh, and this is great um, because also when the result comes out, and this is a green one, then uh, you are so excited. Okay? Yeah. You can celebrate it with your team. It's like, we made it, you know? We, And I think autonomy is its very important things that the teams should have in big companies while they are contributing to the same goal for the companies, while they are contributing to the same OKR, yeah. but they should have their own space to make mistakes, to try things and uh, and deliver, basically, because those that cycle actually or those kind of behaviors creating the, the healthy, uh, basically, products and make it more productive internally for people to be open. Yeah. And um, and I think, um, as you said about delegation, this is so important, you know, as a tech lead, you, you for sure, you can delegate your decisions to, uh, to your engineers, uh, because you, in case I'm gonna ask you, okay, what you should use for the, for the encryption as an algorithm, and then I can do the study myself, but I can also give it to my major or senior engineer, and yeah. then, okay, don't make the decision, just share with me what are the, your findings and then make the decision because I can also ensure that we at the end we make a decision or sometimes you even don't need that step. Just go give me the name. But that's exactly your uh, confidence to yeah. trust the team at the same time shield them. So if they make a mistake, they should have this kind of uh, safety. So, okay, if I do a mistake, I'm sure my tech lead is going to support me and yeah. uh, we will figure out how to fix it. Exactly, should have their back. But that's where exactly. the, the time management skill comes in that you mentioned, right? You can you can probably figure out a lot of things yourself. Yeah. But is that the most effective way to, to be in your role, right? Yeah. And to enable the team in that way? Probably not, because then you would be part of the team figuring those things out. Exactly. And that's where you delegate and trust the team that you have. Yeah. I love the way that you laid it out. And, and also a lot of people 
look internally when something goes wrong. Yeah. But it's hard to be like, well, it's actually the environment's kind of messed up <laughs> and, and we kind of need to fix that and yeah. then I can shine in, in the role that I have. Yeah, exactly. And this is exactly the switch that you do from a senior engineer to tech lead. And from the moment that you get delegations, mm. you become to giving delegations, actually. Yeah. And then uh, that's exactly the boundary that you switch from in, in your career that you say, okay, now I, I should keep in mind that I'm not the person doing everything. No, yeah. I'm the person with more responsibilities that I have to take care of them at the first place. And then also ensure that I give proper tasks to proper engineers because you have to also ensure that you don't give a junior uh, actually engineer a complicated task that just bring in disappointment. Yeah, believe me, it doesn't mean this distrusting. Basically, no, I trust you, but I should also ensure that you get things slowly. Then uh, you can learn from them yeah. because you have to consider when you don't know. I mean, like a kid when when they try something and they hit the ball for the first time, then it's like, okay, that was a big one, you know? Yeah. And then they, the next time they are a bit more scared to even to do a simpler job. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to ensure that you don't make your engineers get scared yeah, and give them proper things. Because I believe always uh, in, in this term that you have to have the right person, right place, right time. Exactly. And then it will work. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. I love that. Also, when, when you mentioned kind of incrementally upping the difficulty, it's something we did in school, for example, in gym, when we had to do something, I was like, well, that's physically impossible. Yeah. You just start out slow and then you actually raise to that bar and you're like, well, I can, I, now I can make it. Exactly. Or, well, I can't make this yet, so let's work on, uh, on X, Y, and Z. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that you, wait, let me rephrase that. There's something you mentioned about being a tech lead um, and it worked out well for you, right? Yeah. You took that position and you basically took the plunge. I think you and me are people that take the plunge more often yeah. uh, than some other people. But how can you do that in such a way that it doesn't necessarily have to be a plunge? Is it something you can do more incrementally, uh, as in gaining more responsibility, uh, and kind of learning your way through, instead of making that big yeah. hump initially? Uh, this is a great question. The, the thing that I was actually, I, I taught it also about it myself, because I'm thinking about my engineers, okay, how I can make them a tech lead, how I can help them to, to have this career. Yeah. The, the, something is, uh, of course, I mean, if the person is not there, mm. um, the, the environment responsibilities is as equal as that demanding. So uh, you have to also, I mean, me as, as, an, uh, as a manager, I always think now, okay, if I'm gonna have my engineer, I have to ensure that that person first of all wants that. Mm. So uh, even if maybe the company tries to push you, but this is not what you want. So you have to first understand if the person wants that. Yeah. The second is you prepare the, basically in the hierarchy of the company, the the positions actually, and then not only to limited uh, kind of VIP people, but just to uh, to have them replace and grow. Because if I'm a tech lead, I'm gonna stay there for ten years, and my senior engineer is gonna be ten years senior engineer. Yeah, um, I don't think we are gonna stay there. So you have to also ensure the tech lead should grow, mm. uh, and then replace it with another person, or you have more products. So you give basically uh, you you give the the new team uh, team lead to the new projects. Yeah. Um, and from you as a person, you have to also, when you want to understand, okay, I think the tech maybe is a good thing for me, is, uh, um, sorry, just let no me worries. <laughs> I think it's moving still. Yeah, the headset. Okay. Yeah. Um, then as a person, if um, you want to, okay, say, okay, now I'm ready to, to look for opportunity, is, um, is the moment that you are, kind of confident with what you're doing in your in your stack mm. as a senior engineer you're good enough to to do anything you want and you're already helping other engineers um, okay. and i think this is this is something that i try to do always that budding the, the senior engineer in my team with the junior one um, and and ensure they have a close kind of peer to peer kind of connection yeah so uh, in, in, you see okay i i'm helping people and and do this uh, maybe instead of helping two engineers i can help a team Mm. And and I would like now to know more about the full pictures because when you are an engineer and you're under basically uh, the tech lead, you are just getting the information as you need uh, mm. to to make your job right. Of course, you will have the full picture of what is the product at the end of the day. Yeah. But maybe at, at the beginning you don't know all the bits and yeah. you only get chunk by chunk like an agile way of working yeah. to finish something. But now you want to know more because also you want to impact maybe the full pictures and touch the stuff there. Say so, okay. 
this is a product, but why not adding that or remove that? And that's the moment that you can think of, okay, I need to have some connection with the business and I want to help my team. So then I should think about the team leader or tech lead. Yeah, I like that. There's something interesting you mentioned in that the tech lead is also not the end goal, right? I, it was kind of out of out of picture for me at first. Uh, yep. But you still can grow from there and probably, this is just an assumption, uh, can grow your sphere of influence, right? Because you've already gotten to that level where you're responsible uh, of delivery and time management and the people that actually do the job more hands-on. Yeah. Uh, but what is that next step then after, or, or for you personally even? Uh, yeah, and, and this is this is so nice because uh, m- my colleagues actually ask about me when when I said okay I'm moving on from from and then I I moved to to IKEA recently. Yeah, and they said okay, uh, what you're gonna select as a tech lead? You wanna go more deep in the technical part? Or you wanna to go to more people part? And I said okay, I, honestly I I see myself on the on the people more. Mm. And, uh, and by the way, I give just maybe an add-on to this. I, I was a captain in when I was playing football, so these kind of leading things was always kind of in my gene. Nice. But um, as a tech lead, of course, this is not the end of the world, and, and the companies have different kind of namings. Uh, you become a senior tech lead, you become a platform tech lead, or yeah. actually this is higher than a normal tech lead because the tech lead can be responsible for one t- or two team. Um, but also when you grow to those positions, you are responsible for tech leads and more teams, basically. Mm-hmm. But uh, what you can consider is when you become a tech lead, you have to make a decision now. You want to go more on the people management side or to go to the to the technical side. So this is also the moment that you can pick between solution architect path or or become like an engineer manager. Yeah. And uh, and I think in the hierarchy they are exactly in the parallel path. So. I mean, from the compensation perspective, from the uh, anything you can consider in the hierarchy of companies, usually they are in the same way going up. You become a s- uh, solution architect, principal solution architect, and then you become a chef. And, yeah. and it's it's just going up, uh, but just the the way that you go uh, is uh, basically selecting between people management and technical. Yeah, well, that makes sense. How, how's that for you personally? You're going to move more to the people side then, right? Uh, yeah, because actually my, my vision for myself is mm. having my own startup in the future. Awesome. And, uh, and that's why I want to know yeah, how, how this complex works, you know. Yeah. And for me, it's always interesting uh, to help people and to grow and also with them make something uh, in positive, impactful for, for the human beings. And that's my personal wish to, to, to make it even broader than maybe a country to uh, uh, more people. Uh, but also... I have friends that uh, they would love always be on the on the actually on the uh, kind of bare metal job, yeah. which is which is coding and and doing that sort of stuff. But also, it doesn't mean when you become engineer manager, you're going to be far away. But usually, when it goes upper and upper, you can uh, get a bit uh, far from the tech part. Yeah, and uh, and you help basically. Now you are a servant. I mean, yeah. when you become to the people part, it's a supportive position. Yeah. Than uh, than being in the front line, when you go to the tech side, exactly you are you are the front fighters basically. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, I think I've laid it out like a multiplier before, right? First you're a maker, uh, and then you're a multiplier. You're an enabler of the environment and the people exactly. there. Actually, that's that's true. Yeah, and and um, when you become also a manager, I mean, this is my, my myself uh, yeah. in my in my free time or for personal. Uh, kind of joy. I d- still keep keeping uh, close to to the tech and understand what's going on. And and I think when uh, this is also good things to mention. When an engineer manager or a manager um, already had a technical background or was a developer, mm. I've always uh, actually seen a better result than putting managers that they don't have any tech background on top of technical people. Yeah, because uh, they don't talk the same language. Yeah, <laughs> it's different. Yeah, and mm. uh, and I think. I, I had also experience like that and it didn't work out that well for me because we had kind of redundant discussions on, on understanding each other. But when you let the engineers grow to the tech lead then to the management or to the solution architect, because also as a solution architect, you have to have good soft skills Yeah. because you have to be able to propose your solution to broad actually audience. But when you do that, that, that stepping is... Um, is also so helpful and grateful for the engineers that gonna work later under those people. Yeah. So it works both ways, right? Because you, as the person in that position, 
have the perspective, you can speak the language and you can yeah. relate. And from the opposite side, you know what they've been through yeah. and you know they have that perspective and they can relate. Exactly. You know the suffers and the, and the gains, right? And yeah. And uh, when you are talking about the tech dev with your manager, you don't need to explain what is tech dev, right? Yeah. We had a tech dev, we need uh, two months of breathing time to fix it. I yeah. Said, okay, you get it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. But um, this is really something that I have, I found this topic always kind of um, negotiable in, in companies that I join. Yeah. And um, and I think this, this type of kind of healthy growth is going to reduce those redundant talks. Yeah, for sure, man. I love it. Healthy growth. Let's, yeah. Uh, let's leave it out on that. Mahdi Fani Disfani, everyone. That's it. Thank you for yeah, coming on. Sure, of course. It was really a pleasure to be here. Awesome, man. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. We'll do this again when you uh, actually get to that startup part. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Beyond Coding. From your sponsors, Zebia, creating digital leaders.